Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope you guys are having an awesome day today. So as you can see here, we have Factory Planner open, which I have installed recently and also figured out how to use. <clears throat> and these are the numbers that I was calculating towards the end of last episode. And as you can see, I was a little bit off, but not by much. Um, I think I was just overcompensating a little bit to add a little bit extra just in case. Um, but we basically have this exact amount of... Um, or we had this exact amount calculated pretty much. Uh, and this is without modules. So this is, and this is for four belts, not two. Um, so we are looking pretty good because when we add in modules to all of these things, um, we add in prod two modules and we add in uh, speed two modules for beacons, um, we can get four belts from basically the amount of buildings that we have built, which is awesome. So as we work towards getting um, beacons, and then uh, adding prod mods and speed mods to everything, it looks like we'll be able to get the four belts of uh, copper plate that we want out of the buildings that we have built. Um, and then in addition, if we want to speed them up in the future, we'll be adding even higher productivity modules and speed modules, and that will, uh, of course, boost our production even more. And then, of course, if we really need to, we can always you know, double the amount of production we're doing. But I don't know if we'll need to do that. We'll see. We'll find out. But I did want to uh, say that in the future I will use this more um, just so that we can do calculations more quickly instead of spending several minutes going through calculations. It takes about two seconds to do here, um, which is nice, I suppose. Um, I do have a minor in math, so at least that gave me some excuse to use to do math but uh, and use my degree. But no matter, we shall do it that way instead. And as you can see, I have mostly finished off um, all of the building here. The only things that are missing are these uh, casting machines, and the reason that those are missing is because we actually um, need more circuits, and to get more circuits, we need more copper because we have no copper left, basically. So, uh, we are gonna finish this off as quickly as possible today. So what we need to do that is we need to bring in a sulfuric acid train. We need to bring in water from our lake over here. Um, and then we need to finish off by taking the ingots that we make and transporting them back to the base. So that is the goal today. And as you'll notice, I also finished off all of our filtration plants, uh, at least in terms of hooking up uh, the copper output, but we need to hook up stone output. And we also need to handle all of the water for that as well. So that should be relatively simple. So first things first is the sulfuric acid train. And I am just going to do a super simple um, turn off for this because we don't need anything fancy for this and we just need the train to come by, drop off sulfuric acid, and then um, head back out. So that is what we're gonna do. So let's just do this right here and then we have some signals and we'll signal this really quickly. So this is crossing, this is crossing, and then the rest are just regulars. So this is regular. Regular, 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 and this one already is signaled, very good. And this is fine. Let's put in a train stop here. And then we can export into some tanks. Let's do our pumps here, exporting, exporting, and a tank, and another tank. And we are going to be um, using quite a bit of sulfuric acid. If we look back at this factory planner, um, this is with modules, so let's look without modules. We're gonna be using roughly 2,000 a minute, and my guess is we are not making 2,000 a minute. Uh, so we need to definitely increase our sulfuric acid production, which means we probably need to increase our sulfur production, and so on and so forth. So let's look at our sulfuric acid train. And what we're gonna do is actually let's, um, let's change this. This is gonna be sulfuric acid drop and we're gonna just add in one more symbol here uh, for copper ingots. And that's gonna be the name here. And then what this is gonna do is we're gonna add in that uh, stop. We're gonna say empty cargo. And then we're gonna also say, um, or we're gonna say time passed for let's say 30 seconds. Okay, it does not take 30 seconds to drop off all your inventory. And then we're gonna do the same here as well. This one's also going to uh, do a time pass. That way, um, it'll start moving between them more quickly. And we're also gonna add in one more pickup of full cargo 
in between these. So um, hopefully this one train will suffice. If not, then we will work on that. And let's quickly turn this off uh, so that we can power this really quickly and get it exported. And then we'll turn it back on. There we go. So we have some sulfuric acid here, which is awesome. We have about 10,000. And that should be good enough to get us started here. So let's hook up sulfuric acid. There we go, that's sulfuric acid. And they all should have sulfuric acid. I'm pretty sure I hooked up all the pipes. I did not, I missed this uh, section down here. So we can just hook these up and that looks like it's good. All right, so that's sulfuric acid, very easy. And the last thing that we need to do, um, okay. Looks like I've hooked up some pipes incorrectly. Let me go deal with all the incorrect pipes and I will be right back. Bro, what the f Okay, looks like I just hooked up the water pipes instead of the sulfuric acid pipes. So now it looks like all the sulfuric acid is good and let's just double check that I've hooked it up everywhere. Again, this one is all good actually. All right, so that means that we just need to finish it off with water. So this should look, this should look fine now. Okay, it does. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is going on here? All right, so we just need to hook up water and that should be pretty straightforward. So that is going to be, this is the water line. And we just need to come right over here. And we shall come right up this way, straight to the water. And we just need one pump. I don't think we need more than that. So let's do one offshore pump. And again, if we look at this factory planner, it needs 16,000 water a minute, and this can pump 1,250 water a second. So that should be perfectly fine. And let's uh, grab our big power poles. This will be perfectly fine. And then we'll fly back over here. And these should start working if I hooked it up correctly. Perhaps I did not. What did I, oh, I didn't hook up that pipe over there. All right, so once I hook up this pipe, all those should start working. And indeed they do. So these will start uh, outputting enriched copper. And we will deal with uh, beacons here later. I know I didn't really leave room for them, but we also don't have anywhere that we can put them at the moment because we can't make them. Um, so these should not start working quite yet. Oh, and the other thing we do need to add is Pyroflux. So I completely forgot about Pyroflux. So let's double check on um, this. So these are outputting water and we are not going to try and burn this water off. We are actually going to try to deal with um, incorporating it back into the system, which of course means that we need to add um, a tank here for doing that. So let's add, um, how should we do this? Let's add a tank right here and we'll add a pump here and we'll add pipes here and then we will put this like this. All right, so our pump is on and then we just need to say when our water is less than uh, 2,500, then we're gonna be enabled. There we go. All right, so it should be disabled now, which is awesome, which is exactly what we want. And now I'm sure dirty water has backed up because of um, too much water in the output. So we're gonna hook up dirty water to this. 
or I mean the clean water from dirty water to this. All right, there we go. And so all these should start working again. And the last thing, uh, I think we're gonna put this into a warehouse for the moment. And in the future, we'll have a train come and pick it up and integrate it into the base. Seems like a good idea. And then this copper should come back in here and get reprocessed, which is awesome. So then the next thing that we need to do is we're going to just copy this section right here. And we're just gonna paste it down like so. And we're gonna grab the station because we want it to be named differently. So this is gonna be Pyroflux Drop. And we're gonna add in, um, again, a little copper ingot because we're gonna have a couple of these stations. So that's uh, Pyroflux Drop. And we don't have a train set up yet for this, do we? We do not. So this is gonna be Pyroflux, 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 Hiccup. And there's only gonna be one of those stations, so that's gonna be its name. And before we go any further, let's see if we can add, make this like a cool orange color. Uh, that looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks kind of interesting. Ah, whatever. Um, so it looks like we're good on sulfuric acid. So now we need to set up the Pyroflux train. So I am going to head down there and I'll see you there. Okay, guys, we are down here and we have some locomotives. So let's set one up here. And then we are going to, it looks like I don't have a fluid wagon, huh? All right, I'm gonna request one fluid wagon, no more, no less. And looks like one is on the way, very good. Let's get rid of some stone that we don't need. And then now that we have our fluid wagon, we can hook that up. And let's see, we have 6,000, 7,000 Pyroflux. Hopefully that's enough to get us going. The goal for this really is um, for the Pyroflux to get us far enough that we can start making copper so we can get back over there to get more. Pyroflux, that is. And let's come over here, what was this number? 255.119. And I know you can copy, but you can't copy from satellite mode, unfortunately. Uh, so 255, and that's 119, there we go. Let's copy the color over, very cool. Then we're gonna add pickup, and we're gonna say full cargo, or 60 seconds past, let's say, uh, because it's not gonna be full right now. And then we're gonna say drop is empty cargo. Very cool. Okay. Then we're gonna head over to the drop. And looks like the train is working as expected at least. So that's very good. Just always wanna make sure that you know your train can make it from one place to another. And I'm thinking about these tracks. We're gonna be having a lot more trains running on these tracks. We may end up upgrading to a four lane uh, track system, but I'm not entirely sure yet. It depends on if we're having train throughput issues. Right now we should be okay. We ha still have few enough trains that it shouldn't be too big of an issue. Okay, let's work on outputting here. So tank and tank and pipes and power. And that should be good. Very cool. All right, so we have Pyroflux here. Now we just need to hook it up to our system. And before we hook it up, let's figure out where we can hook it up. That or Let's make sure that all of the um, sections are um, basically ready to be connected before we actually do it. And let's hook this up. And then we can just copy this and we should be able to put it in all of those places for the Pyroflux. And I think that, no, that's not quite good enough, is it? Because th these don't have Pyroflux over here. So let's uh, paste again here. How did I miss that these don't have Pyroflux? I don't know, but that's fine, I guess. So let's copy here, 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 and here. And then we can take all these because those are extras. And I think that that is everything now. So as soon as we hook this up, these will all start working. 
And then the casting machine should, should start immediately afterwards. Check it out, there they go. Alright, so again, these are very slow, and especially with um, without speed modules in, in these, these are going to be... <laughs> these are going to be crafting speed 1, so this is going to take 60 seconds. Over here, these will be a lot faster. And our casting machine's going to start? None of them have started. Why have none of them started? Just not enough? Like, it's kind of split between all of them? Okay, let's see what happens here as more of these finish. They should start working here, I think. At least I hope so. Bro, why... <laughs> it needs 250, I guess, so that we have, like, too many. These should definitely start catching up. Once they start catching up, then I think it'll be fine. Because these take, what, 25 seconds? I don't know. Seems a little weird. Maybe it's because these are going so slowly that it just has they haven't started yet. I don't know. Or maybe it's because there's so many of these that it's trying to fill them all at once and then they'll all start working all at once. And we'll have a huge output burst of ingots. Oh, here are a couple. Okay, so some of them are working. You can see that some of them are actually... Um, they're on right now. It's hard to tell that they're working. Um, with alt mode on, you can't really tell unless you look closely at like the stacks over here. Um, but okay, so we do have some ingots coming out. And let's not get hit by a train. And let us uh, underground all of these to the other side over here. And I guess that's the closest that'll work. There we go. This one, and we have one more over here. And apparently none of these have started working. How's that even possible? How have none of these over here started working? Okay, there we go. For literally the first ones as I like flew up here. Um, it must be because of uh, the fluid mechanics and then these are being super slow because of the modules. But as we get speed modules in here, uh, that'll definitely increase the speed. So, last thing that we need to do is we need to have a train. And let's see. Oh, okay. We can't flip it. I was going to say if we could flip it, that'd be awesome. Um, so, let's see. Where, where can we have this train come in? I think we can have it come in right over here. And so, we'll have it come down like this. And honestly... Like, if we think about it, so, um, because each ingot can be turned into, uh, ten plates, and I don't know exactly, um, I don't know if they stack in smaller stack sizes, like one-tenth of the size so it doesn't matter or something, I don't know, but, um, if they stack in the same stack sizes as plates, which they might, that means that one- uh, train car would be equivalent to 10 train cars worth of plate. So that's kind of um, important to note. So we're actually gonna um, just do one train car, I think. And we're gonna do it like this, and we're gonna have a warehouse, because that's easy. And we don't even really need to balance these belts coming in, because it won't matter, really. And we'll just start loading them all, I think. So, let's see if we can do this. Yeah, because balancing doesn't matter if you're just going straight into a warehouse. Um, and let's do that. There we go. Okay, so that's a decent amount of uh, ingots there. And this one also looks like it has a decent amount. And let's do one more line here. Oh wait, two more lines. Just kidding. Two more lines here. Okay. There we go, and then the last line right over here. Okay, that is all of the ingots, and we do have a decent amount here. So this is a lot of uh, plates. There we go, and let's power this. Uh, and I guess we'll just go across the track, I guess, to... Oh yeah, we can just hook up to the ones on the track, very nice. Then um, I do have some rocket fuel here, so I'll split it between the two engines. <clears throat> um, and let's see, how many ingots do we have? Okay, so they do stack in 50s, and plates stack in 100s. So, one of these cars would equal 5 cars of plates, if I 
do my math correctly. Because uh, if they stacked them the same, it would be 10 cars worth of uh, plate. And since they stack in half as much, it's half as many cars. So it's five cars. So this one car of ingots is worth um, five cars worth of plates. So that's a decent amount of uh, ingots. So we're going to fly down here and we're probably going to run out of fuel before we make it. Um, and we did. That's all right. So we're going to run right down here. And I was thinking that we're going to have our train. Maybe we'll do it up here, actually. So that we don't have to tear this up for the moment. So we can continue trying to get rid of all this copper. Okay, fine. So we'll do it right up here, actually. So we don't have to run as far either. <clears throat> and I think that's fine. Um, the iron plates, I think. Because we're going to have to do iron soon, too. Which will be fun. Alright, so let's um, grab our rail book and we're going to do a T-junction like so. There we go. And let's get rid of this signal. That doesn't need to be there. And this signal. And then we'll have them... Um, let's see. I think that that looks okay. Okay, come on. Train, uh, rails can be so wonky sometimes. Okay, there we go. And right now we're only gonna have the one train, so this is fine. And this will come in. And we'll try and line it up with this one. That looks like it's lined up. Very cool. And looks like our bots probably are coming to finish building this. Um, so let us quickly uh, come down here. Grab this, this is gonna go here. Okay, there we go. And then we'll do right here and we shall grab one of these, bring it up over like this. And then we'll do that, there we go. And then this will unload via stack inserters to, I guess, another warehouse because warehouses are easy and fun. And then this will only output to one belt. So if we look at this, um, it is, and we look at number of belts, right? It is gonna be 0.8 um, belts of copper ingots. So we can definitely um, do it just on one. Okay, so. Then we just need to output, as I said, here. And let's change the direction of this. There we go. And I think that we can even have the machines doing it right up here. We don't need too many. And let's just double check how many we need. We need 12 machines. And this is for, that. those 12 are for four belts, not one. Right? Let's, eight belts. Oh, but that's eight yellow belts, I think. Yeah, four, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight yellow belts, which is four um, red belts. Okay, so that, that's good to know. So four red belts. So that just means three um, assemblers per belt, because that's, that's some good math right there. Three assemblers per belt, that equals 12 assemblers for four belts. So we'll do it like so. And let's see. I guess we'll do this. It's kind of, I don't know how you do this really. So uh, let's actually not do it right next to that belt right there. Let's do it a little bit of ways. <clears throat> and then um, actually, you know what? You know what I'm curious about now that I'm looking at this? Can you module this um, recipe? Okay, you cannot. I was gonna say, that'd be insane if you could module that recipe, but it makes sense that you can't, okay. Um, I feel like in the past you could, but I, I could be wrong about that. All right, so this is what we're, we're doing right here. And I guess, honestly, here's probably the best way to do it, okay? You have stack inserter, stack inserter, stack inserter, stack inserter. And then you have, um, you have two of them drop on the near side and you do the same thing for the last building, if, uh, <laughs> if you can place it correctly. And that means that it should balance on its own, but then we'll do down down here, uh, just to be safe, what we'll do is we'll add in a lane balancer, 
or side balance. I don't know what people call these. One of these guys, right? And then we'll do this again right over here. Uh, let's see. Right like this, I guess. And do some input, do some input. There we go. This will be... And we'll, of course, add more later when um, we increase our production. But that looks good, I think. And we'll split this then. Let's do a balancer. Let's do a one to four balancer. One to four, okay? Because we're eventually gonna have four lanes coming off of this. There we go. And then this will come right in here. All right, I think that's everything. And then these are gonna be our two belts of copper. Let's get rid of these rocks here because they're annoying. And where the heck are we going to fit these in? So we need to like, geez, we need to come in through here somehow. I guess right here is the best place. Okay. So right like this. Uh, that's a little, that's not, that's not too far. Let's just go there. And sorry, guys, it's probably hard to see. So let's do it this way. Okay. And then we'll do this. And we'll do this. And where are we? We're all the way up over here. I love this part about Factorio. This is the easy part. Oh, let's cancel that. Okay, there's one belt done. Uh, let's not do that. Let's do this. So that destroys the trees instead of going around them. There we go. Okay, that should be the belts all hooked up. And that means that finally, the last thing that we need to do to finish this off is, of course, to get the train working. Uh, so this is going to be copper ingot drop. Drop. And over here, this is going to be... Um, whoops, not that. This one is going to be copper ingot. Pick up. There we go. And then, uh, looks like uh, I have some signaling issues here. Oh yeah, because I didn't signal that intersection. Whoops. Would help to signal the intersection that you're working on. So that's a mistake. Uh, whoopsies. <clears throat> but no matter. It'll be fixed here very quickly. So let's see, uh, my signals, let's see, this one is crossing, this one's crossing, and then this one is after, 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 and here, that, and then this also needs to go out. Um, so we need to do this, like this, right? And then this, put this here, this here, these here, I think that's everything. Yeah, okay, very good. And why is this not working? Probably probably almost out of Pyroflux, I would guess. Yep, almost out of Pyroflux, sad. So we're gonna have to get more. And then we can do pickup, and we're gonna say full cargo or time passed is uh, 120 seconds, so two minutes. And then we're gonna say drop. We're gonna say empty cargo. Then we're gonna jump in and we're gonna go drop it all off. Gotta make sure everything works. And hopefully this will give us a very much needed copper influx to our base because our base has been suffering hardcore without this copper. All right, so it looks like we are able to pull in uh, successfully and our uh, ingots are coming out. We had almost a full cart, so that's five full, almost five full uh, uh, wagons full of copper, which is quite a bit of copper. And these should start outputting copper plates. There we go, that is our process, all finished. And uh, we can speed these up a little bit. There we go, check it out. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's fully compressed. 
I think you need to set these to stack size four to work correctly. I think to get a compressed belt. Oh shoot, and we gotta drop some on the near side again. Right, is that correct? That looks like it's a compressed belt. Yeah, okay. I knew you had to like set a weird stack size uh, for that. So let's pick these up. Okay, and then the last thing actually that we need to do is we need to hook in these belts so that they actually go into our main lines. We just brought them down here, but we never hooked them in. So if we come down here, where's our, there's our copper lines. So we need to come all the way across here. And how are we gonna do this? This is gonna be a little bit messy to start with, I think. Okay, and then we're gonna have the other line come in right here. Okay, so this is, yeah, this is gonna be messy for sure. All right, let's undo that. Let's, how are we gonna do this? Move this down, I guess. And then underground this here just so that there's one square gap. And then like this, I guess, and like this, and then like this. Okay, and then we're gonna say input priority is on this side and input priority is on this side. That way we're inputting priority from, well, it's not working exactly like I might like, what the heck is going on here? Um, looks like this needs to be changed. I don't know, it's kind of a mess in here, honestly. <clears throat> um, this, actually, we're gonna do this. So this is gonna go here. That's gonna go there. I don't know, either way, it's a huge influx of copper into the base. And let's see, are these still, are these still working? Oh yeah, we still have a ton of ingots left. Oh, and we're still unloading even more. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we have, look, we have a thousand ingots in here. That's 10,000 plates. Okay, that's sick. Our base desperately needed all that copper. So now we are going to start seeing an increase in um, circuit production, which is honestly one of the main things that we needed an increase in. Uh, so that is very much needed. So I'm gonna actually uh, get ready now that we're done with the copper, or at least mostly done with the copper build for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get ready to go back um, to the Vulcanite planet because we need to we need to head over there in order to oh perfect timing actually for the rocket to be finished, um, but we're still going to need some more rocket parts before we head over. We need a bunch more Vulcanite, and so. Uh, and we need to finish a few more things over there. So that's going to be the goal today is also to finish uh, signaling this rocket and then um, actually going there and getting a bunch of Vulcanite. So give me a few minutes to try and get the rest of these rocket pieces and then we'll head on over. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so we're, we're doing okay on the rocket parts. Um, we're getting there. But what we want to do is we want to set up the signals just like over here in order to launch. So we're going to copy these over. Okay, so let's copy them here and let's see, what do we need to check? So <clears throat> we need to check the input of um, our rocket parts and we can connect up uh, the signal to send the green signal. And then finally, the other thing that we need to do is we need to actually get in our signals from uh, Salamene. So let's put down a signal receiver here. And then we're gonna set up, once this comes in, uh, we're gonna set up basically the almost exact same thing that we're doing here. So I'm gonna put down another one of these. Uh, let's get out of the way, there we go. And this is gonna be Selimene to novice. And if we connect this up, actually let's check what signal we need. Green, looks like. 
All right, so if we connect up the green signal, we'll see everything that we have over there on Salamene. And it looks like we have 44 rocket parts over there already. <clears throat> Excuse me, which is awesome news. Um, so that means we just need a little bit less in terms of going over. And then let's also set up another one of these right here. There we go. And we're also gonna set this up. I'm doing almost the exact same thing as over there. So this is gonna be, uh, we're just gonna copy this over and we're gonna change this to Vulcanite instead of Cryonite. And then we're gonna send that here. And that is gonna be, uh, let's actually do this. All right, and if we power this up, that should be sending. Uh, oh, we read logistic network contents. Oh, I guess we have none in the network, so that makes sense. I don't know why I was confused there. Okay, this is gonna be novice to Salamene. Uh, okay, so that should now be sending the uh, Vulcanite block signal whenever we eventually have that. And then over here, we're gonna be using this input signal, this one right here. And again, we need to make sure that we keep these signals separated and this is going to be coming in here i believe how does this one work exactly so this is inputting l which is what we want l is outputting here and then we're adding and making m and then oh and then we need to do um red input from here i believe to do so what's the M output here? M output is 473. Okay, that sounds about right. So we're gonna start doing this and then we're gonna output this here. Now let's do red signal actually. This here and this here. So this one is rocket fuel is less than or equal to zero, which is what we want. And this one is rocket fuel is greater than zero, right? So this is M. Uh, let's not connect this up. What is this? M minus rocket fuel. And this one is outputting. I gotta remember exactly what this does. So again, let's just go over this again, all together. So L is the amount of liquid rocket fuel that we need coming in. And uh, that is 21,000, okay? Then we're gonna divide by 50 because you get 50 per rocket fuel. And so then we send L over here. We add 50 as a buffer. We output M. We compare M to the amount of rocket fuel. Um, oh, and then we come over here. We subtract the amount of rocket fuel that's in um, the silo. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, yeah, okay. So we connect this, it's M minus rocket fuel and output M. So we're outputting for 390, makes sense. And then this, oh, that's why. This here is not what should be connected. What the, no, stop it. Um, this is not what should be connected. This one here is what should be connected. Yeah, that's what I was doing wrong. Okay. That looks correct. This is inserting now, and we should see M going down as we're inserting rocket fuel. So again, what I'm doing here is Salamene is basically telling us how much rocket fuel we need, and then we're calculating that, and then we're inserting until we reach that amount, and then we're stopping. So we're having to calculate based off of what's in here. We're also adding 50 as a buffer, like I said. Um, plus, we'll probably use that 50 some other way on Salamani anyways. And we should stop uh, inserting as soon as M reaches zero here, which is coming up. Very cool. That's exactly what we want. Um, so it looks like we have enough rocket fuel now. And then for our launch trigger, our launch trigger is all set up. Because um, we're just going to launch basically as soon as possible. Um, we shouldn't have to worry about this sulfur thing or this solid fuel thing we're gonna be just fine on both of those and all this looks good so yeah that's um the signal set up for this so now we just need to wait for rocket parts and then we'll be ready to go 
Okay guys, so we're about to head off. Um, I've collected enough rocket parts. I've also added a bunch more solid fuel. Um, just for the time being, we need to make sure that the power over there is gonna be okay. So I've got quite a lot of solid fuel and we're still adding a bit more. And I just wanted to go over to here and make sure that there wasn't anything else that we needed to grab. So um, we don't need to grab anything for this, I don't think. We're going to uh, bring some belts over here for that solid fuel, like I mentioned. Um, so that isn't a, a bit that big of a deal. Um, <clears throat> the question is, is do we want to add more power output right now? And we're doing okay on power here. I think power is okay for the moment, honestly. Uh, we don't really need to add any more. So I don't think that there's really anything else that we need to bring. We just want to make sure that we have enough belt, but 500 belt should be plenty. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head over there and we're going to uh, just bring back another load and we're also gonna uh, fix up the uh, decider combinators for launching. And actually, you know what I note, uh, noticed is that it is possible, however unlikely, that we may launch a rocket from here to either of these planets, right? Keon or Salamene, before a rocket that is already there comes back. So I think that to this launch signal, we need to add like one more condition to make sure that there isn't a rocket already in the other launch pad waiting to launch uh, because we really don't want to have you know two rocket two rockets worth of parts all waiting over there and we can't do anything with it um, so we don't want to keep launching rockets when we don't even need to bring one back so we'll I'll uh, think about what we need to do for the signals for that. Uh, but in the meantime, let's head on over to Salamene, and we're going to say launch on green signal when fuel full. So we should get going here, I think. Maybe? Oh, you know what? We have some packed parts, so those packed parts don't count, so we're just going to launch anyways. Because um, I'm sure that we have enough rocket parts. Always a beautiful sight to see us going off to space. Well, kind of off to space. Very briefly off to space. Okay, anyways, here we are. And um, we should make sure that this does not leave without us because I don't want that to happen. Okay, we're, we're good on that. And then let's, uh, looks like we have some fuel. So let's fly over here. And I noticed that we actually ran out of enriched vulcanite and um, so the reason for that is that I hadn't put this um, signal on here. So we need the priority signal going this way so that these never run out. And I was thinking, how can I prove that it will never run out of enriched vulcanite, but that some will always make it over to the other side uh, if the priority output is to circle back around. And here's how you prove it, okay? If you've ever heard of pigeonholing, the idea is that if you have a bunch of pigeonholes and let's say you have three of them and you have four pigeons that are living in there, you know that at least one of those holes is gonna have two, right? So that's the idea of pigeonholing is that um, you have a, a certain amount and then eventually you have too much. Um, and uh, I don't know if this would make it any sense whatsoever, <laughs> but the idea is that basically like eventually it's gonna have to flow over and you're gonna have to have one pigeonhole too. So here what's gonna happen is eventually as we're outputting more enriched vulcanite than we're having cycle around, eventually it's going to have to um, go to the non-priority side over here. I hope that makes some sense. Um, it makes sense in my head, and we should also be getting our sulfur dropped off. Let's see what's going on over here. Okay, so I guess it's just unloading all that solid fuel. And it doesn't know what to do with all <laughs> All the solid fuel in here okay here comes our sulfur and then this should get passed over there we go that's what we like to see so I'm just making sure that the whole process works you know from beginning to end and then in the meantime what we can do is um, we can hook up this warehouse of stone to the output and let's go this way I know it's kind of weird but whatever all right so we're gonna hook up this um, stone output Oh, let's stretch it. There we go. And this 
is going to come right down here and then we'll uh, load it in just like that. That's what we want. And we'll put stone there. And so that'll transfer all the stone out from over here. I know it's a little bit messy, but uh, whatever. And then these should all start working as soon as we get more sulfur um, coming in. And I don't think that, you know, I don't think that this actually would have been an issue because all these probably have enriched vulcanite in them and are just waiting on sulfur. So I guess that um, it's okay, but we would like to enrich it before we do anything else. Um, so I think that adding this, um, this priority on the splitter is perfectly fine. All right, so let's see our process work again. And why do we have only one inserter doing that when we can have four doing it? I don't know. And there we go. We got our cargo wagon being emptied of sulfur. And I was thinking, you know, we have a decent amount of crude oil here. Like, what's this? 2 million, 3.2 million, 4.2 million. We have 4.2 million, okay, 5.3 million oil, and even a little bit more over here and up here. We have plenty of oil here. We can make our own sulfur here. I'm just saying, we could. Um, so we might end up doing that. And these things are so loud, man. Holy cow. But, um, all right. So eventually, um, I'm hoping that my pigeonholing theory <laughs> is correct. Eventually these should start cycling over and, um, making vulcanite blocks. So I'm going to sit around and wait for that to happen. And then we are going to figure out the launch, uh, trigger for our rocket. Okay guys, so it took a minute or two, but we are finally starting to get some enriched vulcanite coming out over here. And so it does indeed appear that my pigeonholing theory is correct, um, as it should have been. Um, and so uh, we are finally going to be able to get some enriched vulcanite coming into our um, furnaces over here. And hopefully we can start using up some of all this crushed vulcanite. That is a lot of crushed vulcanite that's just sitting in here doing nothing. Um, so hopefully we'll start using that up pretty quickly here. And if we aren't, if like, if this number continues to increase and not never decrease, we may have to even work on cycling this back into this process so that it never overflows here, basically. So it, it's still limited by, um, so that way it would, these would still be limited by however much crushed vulcanite gets output here because we're still able to enrich more enriched vulcanite with this crushed vulcanite. So I hope that kind of makes some sense. Um, if this number can, tends towards um, increasing, then we're going to have to do that. Um, but it'll just take time to see that. And I don't have the exact math in front of me and it's hard to calculate that too. Like I'm sure the factory planner can do some of it, but it can't do all of that kind of calculation. Um, like based on inputs and outputs. I don't, okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard to tell with like the same inputs and outputs and stuff, but it looks like it's still increasing right now, um, even though we're starting to do some processes over here. Um, so we may have to work on cycling this back into the main line to get uh, enriched again. But that looks good and um, our train is indeed picking up some vulcanite blocks. And I actually am going to wait around a bit because um, I want as many enriched vulcanite blocks as possible coming back because uh, as we're building out our um, smelting on Novice, all of that smelting is going to rely on making sure that we get these enriched or these uh, vulcanite blocks. And if we don't get those vulcanite blocks, we're going to be in trouble, honestly. Um, so since that's the case, I, we definitely want to make sure that we're bringing back enough where it makes sense. So right now, we only have 3.4 thousand. I would like to have upwards of 25,000 coming back. Um, so I might just end up waiting around here uh, for that to happen. And in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to set up these decider combinators on when we should return. So we have um, coming in here nothing because we have no blocks back on Novice. Okay. So um, we're gonna say vulcanite blocks are less than a thousand back on novice, okay? And we're gonna output one green signal, okay? That's really easy. And let's do that there. Okay, then we're gonna say um, 
vulcanite blocks are greater than, let's say, 25,000. Okay, I'm gonna output one green signal, and that is gonna come from our uh, rocket silo. Now we're gonna take the two outputs of those, put it in here, we're gonna say green is equal to two, and we're gonna output one green, okay? Uh, and then we'll connect that up to the rocket silo. We're of course not setting the launch trigger just yet, we need to wait. Um, Oh, hey bots, thank you for delivering things that I definitely needed. Okay, and then the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work on outputting. This is going to be, uh, I don't know where solid fuel is, solid fuel. There it is, okay. And I don't know what I was picking up there. Looks like solid fuel probably. And uh, we're gonna bring this over here. Let's run it all the way down. we go let's jump down this cliff and we're gonna run it over for um, we are gonna process it because it does processing no matter what increases the output value of your fuel by 10% so we might as well get as much value out of our solid fuel as possible so we're gonna come in over here uh, maybe look back a little bit there we go, those are a little bit loud. And we're just gonna join it in, doesn't matter. Um, and here comes our solid fuel. And maybe we'll prioritize solid fuel actually, just kidding. So we still have a decent amount of coal, but it's gonna run out real fast. We only have 4,000 coal <laughs> left over here, which is kind of nuts. Okay, and here comes our solid fuel in to replace the coal. Um, so that'll start getting turn into process fuel and uh, turn into power. Very good. And we have, I think we brought like 7,000 or something. So we brought a pretty good amount. What are you guys waiting around for? Oh, no room in here? Okay, fine. There we go. Hope you guys are happy. Uh, do we need anything else in here? Ah, we're good. We're good. Okay. So, as I said though, I'm going to wait around for... Um, more Vulcanite blocks to come back. You know what? Before the end of the episode, that is going to be the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to actually expand enriching if I can. I don't know if I have enough belts. I only have 240 belts. Let's see. Let's see how far we can get um, towards expanding that. Um, but we are going to actually run out of sulfur before we get more. Um, actually, sulfur only has like 200 left. Yeah. No, that's not what we want. But, okay, so, another row of this, shall we? Sorry, that is, I know that is a little bit loud. Let's move away from that. And let's see. This is, this looks, this looks okay. Let's maybe leave a little bit of room for a few things. And let's move this. Oh, I still haven't dealt with this steam yet, have I? Well, we're just going to delete it for now. doesn't matter. I would have been burning it off anyways, so no big deal. Okay, this is uh, pretty fast to build. And I think I have enough inserters for everything. Alright, there's the build. Okay, very cool. And then what we can do for this is this belt here, we literally can just bring it right over here and we'll extend this as much as possible. All right, there we go. And this will just join in right here. Okay. All right, that's, that's that. So that's super easy. And then um, the crushed Vulcan, or the, let's see, the enriched Vulcanite belt. We are going to do the same thing. We're going to have a splitter that's going to have um, output priority to this side. And it's going to come up one and then go all the way back down. And it looks like we may run out of belts. So to fix that, we can just underground a bunch of these, like as far as possible.
There we go. And um, I do have cliff explosives that I can go grab here. But this will just come right back in over here. And it'll get joined in. Then we can add a splitter here. And this splitter can uh, start the enriching process over here. So I need to go grab some um, cliff explosives. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are. I just destroyed the cliffs and uh, we can start this working, I guess. So this um, here is going to output priority here, and this is gonna be crushed vulcanite, which means the enriched vulcanite is gonna go down our belt here, All right? And then, um, how do we do this again? I don't even know. Let's just copy this, I guess, actually. All right, so this is gonna go like this and come right up here. And looks like we forgot a long-handed inserter there. That's fine. And then this part here is this crushed vulcanite, I believe. This is enriched vulcanite here. Yep, looks good. And then we just need to bring the sulfur belt over, which of course we're out of sulfur, unfortunately. So we need to work on bringing more of that. And actually, next time we come here, we'll, we'll actually make work on making um, sulfur here because we have everything we need to do that. And we might as well because that's the only thing we really need over here besides petroleum gas, which um, we can make over here too. And we don't have to work, work on transporting barrels. Um, and I think that that looks good. So then the only other thing that we need to do is um, do this. I believe, and input, yeah, input the enriched, and let's just switch the input priority. <clears throat> okay, I think that that is everything. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's um, another row of enriching, and then um, we can actually just, uh, well, let's add some more undergrounds here. Um, we can work on joining this in right over here. All right, so that'll eventually do some um, more enriching because that's pretty much the only thing that we're waiting on, I believe, is enriched vulcanite. Um, that's like the slowest thing that's working. So adding more enriching will definitely increase that. So that is gonna be it for today, guys. Uh, we finished up our copper processing. We uh, worked on um, triggers for our rockets here and so we are now ready to um, increase our smelting arrays to iron and steel back on novice so that's what next episode will be is working on that um, so thank you guys for joining me i hope you enjoyed if you did it'd be awesome if you could leave a like and or subscribe and i will see you all on the next episode